Hello and welcome. Well, back when I refurbished this lathe here, uh, it didn't come with the tailstock ram or the screw. And I made the ram and I made the screw and everything went pretty good except for the Acme threads. The internal threads were easy, but the external threads, I didn't have what I needed to really do it right. Plus, I'd never done it before. Uh, but I've since built a steady rest, or a follow rest rather, and I think that's going to, and I got some more threading tools, I think that's going to make this come out a little bit better. Right now my screw is uh, binding a little bit at one end of the travel, and I know that's what it is. There are really ugly threads. Anyway, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a new threaded rod for the tailstock round. Let's get started. Okay, first thing we need to do is make a, a nut. And that's to test the Acme threads. Now the, the internal threads for this ram were made with a tap. A tap. Didn't work very good, did it? The internal threads for the tailstock ram were made with a tap. So I'm just going to use the same tap and make a nut just to test it with. Okay, this is a mine thing here because this is left hand threads. So i got to turn that backwards. I always try to go the wrong way, but I'm not going to do that this time. These were really hard to cut in the long tail stop ram. I think there's about uh, maybe about an inch of threads in the ram. This is only about a half inch, so it should be pretty easy. Yeah, not too bad. Hit it again. Left hand thread going backward. I don't know how the original was made. Probably a castle nut on the end of this hand wheel. But I put a, a nylock nut on it. Way easier. Worked great. Here's what we got to make. Shouldn't be too bad. A lot of work, but nothing really complicated. Right here, threads are about gone right there. That's where it was binding toward the end of the travel. But they're all really thin. I, the tool I used to make those threads, I made myself out of high speed steel. Plus this was trying to flex when I was cutting it. Hopefully it'll go better this time. Anyway, I'm going to draw that off camera, so I got something something to go by, and then I'll put the tailstock back together so we can support this piece when we're making it. At the time I did this, I had this lathe. At the time I did this the first time, I had this lathe and my Logan. I had a Logan 820, so I actually fabricated the ram on the Logan 820. Logan 820 was a good lathe, and it had less wear than this lathe, but this one's a little bit more solid, so it might actually go better, just because the lathe is a little more solid. It'll go better because I've got a steady rest, or a follow rest. Okay, there's my crude sketch, but it's got enough on there to show me what I need to do. First thing I'm going to do is 
face off both ends and make myself a center hole. That's amazingly straight. Can't believe how straight that is. It's got a tiny bit of wobble. Not enough to worry about. Okay, I'm going to start out on this end. This section here is one inch in diameter. And I'm going to turn this down to five eighths and then that down to half inch and thread that. Flip it around and then take care of this side. I've got about two extra inches in length here and I need three and a half so I'm going to go with almost four. This will be that raised section in the middle. So I need to go down to five eighths. Well, if the dial's right, I should be about 12 thousandths from where I need to be. Almost exactly 12. Smaller at the end, though. My bed wear. Hey, well, I'm about a half under right in there. About a thousandth or two under on the end, but that's where I'm going to cut my three eighths threads anyway. So we're going to we're going to be all right. Then. I could move my tail stock and cure that. But then my drills don't line up with what I'm drilling in the in the chuck. Setting up Mr. Whoopi's auto retract threading tool. Thing's pretty cool. Sixteen threads per inch. Thing's hard to read. Looks better than one I got it, but it's still hard to read. Well, so far this auto retract has always worked good for me, but it's still a little scary. Well, these are going to be ugly threads. I set my gearbox is 16 threads per inch and it's supposed to be 13. That might be there. It doesn't look too bad considering I started out the wrong threads per inch. It goes on a little bit tight. Probably need about one or two more passes. Perfect. Can't hardly tell that I started out at 16 threads per inch. <laughs> I'm glad I noticed that when I did. Okay, now I need to leave a quarter, or yeah, about a quarter inch 
like a donut right there. A little over a quarter there. Okay, for standard threads, you got a profile kind of like that. Excuse my crude drawing. And you set the compound at uh, 29 and a half degrees, and every time you move the tool, you're cutting in deeper like that on one side. But on the Acme thread, you go straight in. And this angle, I don't know what it is. I'm sure I could look it up somewhere. But going in at an angle really doesn't help anything. So, I'm going to straighten my compound. And when I say straighten, I'm going to put it on zero angle. And the reason I'm doing that is because the lathe is more solid like that. When it's sitting at an angle like that, it's not very well supported here. Right there. When it's sitting at an angle and the tool's hanging off on the left side, this whole thing can turn like that, and it can lift up, lift off of that dovetail there. Now, those two flat surfaces are together and the pressure is all downward. I don't know how well you can see that. I think you can see it. There's the standard threading insert. There's the Acme thread. Okay, let's do this right this time. Ten threads per inch. It was already there. Ten threads per inch needs to be to the right, top lever. Ten threads per inch needs to be the right and in. I'm talking about this sliding gear here. Putting it in back gear. And we need to change the feed direction. Right here, this weird little adjustment goes in the middle. There's the bottom, top, and one in the middle. Kind of an awkward adjustment. Different on different lathes. That allows me to throw in the half nut. And right here, I'm putting on my follow rest. Some lathes mounts right there. In fact, you can get a follow rest to mount right there for a south bend. But I made this follow rest, and I made it go on the dovetail here. I'm going to have to move my tool just a little bit off center to get it to work right. Yep, I should have made that follow rest a little bit different. I probably should have made that adjustable where I could move it wherever I wanted to. That would have been ideal. Right now I've got to put my tool back kind of where I had it. So that I can move. I think it'll be okay, but it would have been better if, if the tool was more centered on the compound. Now, when I've used this in the past, I had to adjust this as I was going across. But this is such a short distance, maybe I won't have to do it. Adjust this. And being Acme thread, a little brass bolt riding on top of them won't hurt anything.
Probably should have been taking smaller bites. See what, I think I need to run a little faster. Well, they actually fit pretty good, but they're not not very pretty. A little loose in places. The last one lasted about four four years, I believe. Maybe four years from now, I'll do another video and perfect it. Well, all we got to do now is cut a key right there. I think. Yeah, right there. I'd say that's a little better. I'd like to get a, a larger hand wheel for this thing. Oh yeah, much better. I'll pull the ram out and put grease in the hole. I like it. Ejected the uh, center like it's supposed to. Heck yeah. I like it. Well, I think the reason we had trouble, or I had trouble, is this right here. See the end of the bolts? I need to come up with something better than that. Maybe even ball bearings, but definitely better than that. Brass kind of conforms to the whatever it's rubbing up against, but then you rotate it and it and that is no longer conformed. It's just a bad idea. Also, this is for another video, but maybe make these holes these holes slotted where I can move it to one side. I don't know if I can do it and still maintain uh, strength. But having it being, being adjustable left to right would really be a plus. I might have to just start over. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.